Today we are fielding viewer requests on entry level stick welding. We've had a lot of requests lately, so let's get into shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. You guys like to stick your tungstens in uh, when you're TIG welding. I like to st stick the stick electrodes. That's why they call it stick welding, isn't it? Let's talk about rods because this, this process is real simple. It doesn't have very many variables to it at all except for the rod. Very simply, when we set up a machine, any machine, we are essentially connecting the ground or work cable to the negative lead or lug on the machine. And we are connecting the electrode holder, stinger, whatever you want to call it, we're putting that to the positive terminal. Okay, it's that simple. Some machines you can switch polarity on. Some machines you have to unbolt and physically move them to DCEN or DCEP. Some machines have AC output. They'll run all three polarities. When we say all three, we're talking alternating current, DC electrode positive, DC electrode negative. Okay, let's talk about the electrodes themselves. I'll go through each of them one at a time. I'll run them to their capability and I'll call out a, an amperage. There, and there's a big range of an amperage. First one, common rod, E6010. This rod is designed to run DCEP only. Okay, that's the way it's designed to run. So <clears throat> the classifications of the, the numbering system for these common electrodes, these are for steel. These are for carbon steel electrodes. The first two numbers in 6010 indicate tensile strength. It's 60,000 pounds. The third digit being a one is, indicates position. And here's where it gets a little weird. One is for all positions. Two is for flat and horizontal. Okay, so let's take that one. We're saying it's all positions. We can weld flat, vertical, horizontal, and overhead. But it doesn't tell you whether it can run vertical up, vertical down, or both. As far as a 6010, it will. And here's why. Let's get to the last number. It's a zero. That has the flux makeup, and it has the, I say the flux characteristics, and the electrical characteristics because of the flux. So zero in this instance is high cellulose, sodium, big deal, you know. Here's what's important. The 6010 is a violent, digging, fast freeze type of weld pool, which means when I strike an arc, I can dig and gouge. I could, I could actually blow holes in this 3 8 plate with it. But as soon as I step out of the weld pool, the weld pool freezes nicely, which allows me to weld flat, horizontal, vertical up, vertical down, and overhead in this particular instance. That's just the nature of 6010. Again, DCEP only. Eighth inch, just for the flat beads that I'll demonstrate, I'm gonna run about 85, 90 amps. There are correct and incorrect ways to stick weld, okay? We don't want to use extreme angles. With TIG welding, we said that we're always going to push. So when we weld, this is always a forward process. With MIG welding, where you're generally straight in, slight drag, slight push. With stick welding, Kind of the same thing. You have a window here, but we don't want to use extreme angles like this and drag it. We don't want to use extreme angles and push an electrode. We need to direct the arc down into the uh, material. So with just about any of them, any of the rods that we're going to discuss, you know, if this was straight up 90 degrees, and I went over here to about 10 degrees or so, 15 degrees, and I was dragging, I'd be fine, okay? So let's just keep everything real simple here. We'll get into techniques of weaves and motions and all that. 
later on. So, first rod we're going to run E6010, 8th inch, DCEP. I'm going to run about 85 amps. And I'm just going to strike an arc and use a very slight rocking motion. Okay? Just back and forth and just kind of carry the bead along. That's all I'm doing. Real simple. Keeping the rod down close. Barely dragging the rod on the material. With a very slight stick. So this rod, <clears throat> the nature of this flux produces a, uh, I want to say a light crystally type of, of flux. It doesn't come off real easy. It doesn't come off connected, I should say. But don't beat the crap out of it because it can become airborne if you beat it. Come right back and stick in the lip or go in your eye. Or... So generally let it cool, scratch on it wire wheel with a grinder or hand wire brush, one or the other. This rod does produce a fair amount of spatter. That's, that's just nature of the beast. Remember I said it was a violent digging type of art. So the benefits of this rod, root passes, tacking stuff together. Uh, you know, again, we can run it in all positions. So if you're just running beads and you're running at the correct amperage with the right technique, your bead is going to be about twice the size of your rod. I wasn't gouging it in there. Matter of fact, if I was, it would probably stick. So let's run, let's run this wrong. Let's do a, a long arc. Okay. So we're going to strike an arc and we're going to run normal for a little bit. And then I'm going to show you what happens if you do, if you lift up and start running the long arc. Weld pool is going to get violent, or I should say the arc is going to get violent. The weld pool is going to get, uh, it's going to kind of scatter all over the place. It's going to be hard to see where the actual pool is. So let's try that. We're still at 85 amps. Again, we're running at 85 amps. Gentle stitch, carrying the weld pool, normal arc length. And here's what happens when you pull the arc length back too far. Hard to keep the arc lit. Violent. Wide. Okay, we're just kind of making a mess. Things are out of control because we're not, we're not getting that good stream down at the bottom of the rod to direct it into the plate. We're just pouring a bunch of heat in there. The normal bead, the slag is already off of it. This mess down here, I'd have to get some power tools on it to get it cleaned up. We're three times as wide as a normal bead. So that's the 6010, the second rod that we have to run. Very similar, but it is called 6011. Again, go through the numbering system. <clears throat> 60,000 pounds tensile strength. The one in the third digit means that it'll run in any position. Again, this one has a violent digging fast freeze type of arc. I wish that I had the exact same size, but I don't so that I could com show you the comparison. Some people have a hard time telling the difference between the two as far as the arc characteristic. Fast freeze digging violent type of weld pool. The one in this case indicates a composition that allows it to run on alternating current and DCEP. So it's, a, it's very similar to 6010, except this one will run alternating current as well. I'll run it on DCEP to show the arc characteristic and you can hear it and everything. And then I will run it AC so you can kind of hear it. And it's a little different, a little, uh, I'm gonna say it's close to the same arc characteristic, although it doesn't, 
it doesn't penetrate or dig quite as much because again it's on alternating current. So let's run 6011 on DCEP. This is 332nd. I'm going to run it about 70 amps. Everything is pretty much exactly the same. It looks the same under the hood. It smells the same when you get done. It's got that light, crispy, flaky slag on there. So both the 6010, 6011 run real close to the same. Every one of these little ripples is my heartbeat. No, I'm just kidding. Every one of these ripples in here is where I kind of just a gentle stitch rock or whatever. But that's how violent and how fast freeze this electrode is. As soon as you oscillate or step forward, it freezes and it makes that ridge in there. Let's do a whip. And then we'll run this rod AC as well. When we talk about whip, stitch, they, they kind of all mean the same thing to me. Whip is more of a violent term, you know, it's like whip, I'm going to whip it. So we're going to initiate the arc, get the weld pool, and we're just going to step completely out of it. We'll step, let it freeze, come back on the leading edge. I'll try to make each of these ripples in here, I'll try to make them more pronounced. So let's try the whip. Whip it good! Then whip it. Whip it good. Move forward. Step back. This is kind of like dabbing. Yeah, yeah. You know what? The bead doesn't look. <laughs> too much different than anything else. But that is the big old stitch and the whip and all that. And there's all kinds of little techniques. Slag doesn't want to come off of there very friendly. Look at all those beautiful dabs. Beautiful. So there you go. There's a little afternoon playtime for you there. Do -do 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 stitch big width i mean every time you step out of it it freezes you come back on the leading edge of it and kind of make that ripple pattern in there so i mean this has got so many applications for it. it's a great farm rod eats through rust mill scale you can repair stuff there's two rods you can weld the world with out on the farm with an ac machine this is one of them i'll tell you what the other one is here after a while got a little story to tell you it's a good one so I did mention that this rod would run alternating current. I'm gonna have to turn the amperage up slightly. I'll probably go to, this was 70 amps DCEP. I'll go 80 amps alternating current. So I think by that arc shot, you can see that, you know, you can do some movement manipulation. I think I did the little, uh, little stitch and nay nay there, maybe, huh? I don't know what you call that, but started out a little cold, it looked like. But that was the right amperage. I could tell that it was softer in the penetration profile. I haven't sicked a grinder on any of these yet. You come back and look at these over the top. You walk by them and glance at them. It's gonna be real hard to tell which one's 6010 and which one's 6011. The next rod we wanna run is the, the 6013. Very common rod, very soft arc, very dense slag. It'll, it'll come off in a slag peel. And it kinda looks weird because when you run this rod correctly, 
and you get down to the end, there's these massive holes in your in the end of your slag that's getting ready to come up, and you swear you got porosity. Sixty thousand pounds tensile strength, one all position. Although I have not had much luck running this vertical up. I think it runs better vertical down for me. Three indicates the type of flux and the polarity. The correct polarities that this rod will run on are DCEP, DCEN or electrode negative and alternating current. So this rod will run on anything. Electrode negative will deposit more material quicker. So you'll get a little bit more of a crown or buildup with EN. Let's run them on all three. Uh, we're not going to play no songs during this one here. We're not going to whip it. This is just straight drag. Be as steady as you can. Try not to fall asleep. Very quiet. Very quiet to run. Do not see a slag peel. This plate is getting superheated from the, all these other beads, but watch this. This is how easy. This is just coming right up off of there with the rod that I'm flicking it off there. So this one looks to be crowned up a little bit. It's got good color. Again, it's real soft running. This is not one that you want to do a bunch of manipulations. You're not going to gain anything by doing that. Matter of fact, you're going to make crappy welds if you do that. Because this slag is so dense, you take a chance of this slag running around in front of your pool and this, that's where you'll trap slag. So this is one of those rods that we just kind of want to drag it and be as steady as we can. That was DCEP at 100 amps. I'm gonna change polarity. All I'm gonna do is change leads and do another bead at 100 amps. So that was EN. To me, it looked softer and quieter. Should be crowned up about the same, maybe just a skosh higher. Skosh, that's a welding term. Essentially, those two look the same. Again, as I was welding this, it, uh, it sounded somewhat quieter. Now we'll run this alternating current and listen to it. I think with alternating current, I wanna turn this up from 100 to about 115. Got a little AC buzz working right here. Nice, soft, smooth arc. A little sparkle show going on, but those, uh, that's the nature of AC, but those sparkles are small. They're not heavy, big spatter. There's a long arc. Don't do that. So this is another good general purpose farm rod. Again, soft arc. You can make some beautiful welds with it. Sheet metal downhill, thin stuff on EN. If you had a machine that's alternating current only, this is another good choice of a rod. No reason to manipulate it on any polarity. You're not gonna gain anything. EP, EN, alternating current, and I turned it up slightly. Soft, very pleasant type of an arc weld pool appearance. Okay, 
the last rod that we have here is 30 30 seconds 70 18. now 70 18 is one of the other rods that i mentioned if you had two rods you could weld the world with alternating current now this is one of them great all-around farm rod 70 000 pound tensile strength one in the third digit indicates that it'll weld in all positions flat vertical overhead horizontal it'll do them all however unlike 6010 this will only weld in the vertical position uphill. We do not want to run this rod going downhill. Slag, just too fluid. It'll run right down in front of your pool. The eight indicates the characteristics of the flux. Low hydrogen type of flux. Low hydrogen is the diffusible amount of hydrogen particles per million. It's low hydrogen. Okay, we've done some videos. You can reference a video that we did on hydrogen boil was 7018 or 6010, pretty interesting stuff. Anyway, soft, medium type of penetration, uh, good appearance, good mechanics. We're gonna run this pretty much like, like uh, 6013. We're not gonna manipulate it, whip it. We're just gonna drag it, try to make a nice round weld pool. I'll run DCEP first, and then we'll run alternating current. DCEP. I am going to run 85 amps, 330 second flat position. I'm trying to do action here. The flux, the slag on this rod is more of a, I don't, know, it's, I don't want to say it's like a dense iron powder glass type. You can see how shiny it is. Smooth ripple pattern. I'll run this rod again on alternating current to show you that it will run nicely. A little bit of a rough start there, camera guy. So this is alternating current, and it runs pretty smooth. Sixty hertz output, old time stuff right here. Intro to stick welding. I hope that helped the viewer, uh, several, uh, multiple viewers actually, that were asking a lot of questions about getting into stick welding. Pretty easy stuff. Again, simple rules about rod angle, arc length. I think those are the main two things. Pay attention to amperages. Just keep it real simple when you start out. And if we can help you with anything, please contact us. Thanks so much for subscribing to weld.com over the years. We sincerely appreciate that. Please check us out on Facebook and Instagram and whip it, whip it good. <laughs> you might have to cut that part.